NASCAR's Darlington Throwback Weekend for the Southern 500 is one of the most popular things NASCAR has implemented amongst drivers, teams, and fans that they've probably ever done. And because this year's theme across this Throwback Weekend is the early 90s, and seeing as that's one of my favorite eras across all of racing, I decided to show you my 10 favorite 1990s NASCAR paint schemes. Now, of course, this list is subjective. It's not an objective look at this. So I want you guys to also put your top 10 favorite NASCAR 90s paint schemes in the comments section below. And it's also worth noting that in this list, I decided not to go with one-off or uh, you know partial season uh, liveries. I went specifically with paint schemes that ran a full season. So without any further ado, let's take a look at my list. Number 10, Rusty Wallace, Miller, 1996. Now this is certainly the most underrated of the Miller paint schemes that adorned the Penske racing cars throughout the 90s, but in my opinion, it's the best one. And it also gives a great view of kind of the 90s style, this weird color combination uh, kind of splashed all over, almost like a, a, a solo cup you'd get at a gas station. Really, really cool. And it's nice to see that Brad Keselowski will actually be using this scheme in this year's Southern 500, which probably helped it get onto this list. Rusty Wallace took five wins in this paint scheme throughout the 1996 season, and even ran this scheme on a truck at Nazareth in a one-off appearance. This scheme also appeared in the Kart IndyCar series with Bobby Rahal and the NHRA Top Fuel Dragster scene with Larry Dixon. Number 9. Dale Jarrett, Interstate Batteries, 1993. Now, it wouldn't be a list of NASCAR iconic paint schemes if there wasn't an Interstate Batteries car on there. Uh, this scheme has been around since the 90s all the way up until today's with varying degrees of uh, attractiveness, it has to be said. But perhaps the most attractive one was the one that Dale Jarrett used between 1991 and 1994 driving for Joe Gibbs Racing. The fantastic black mixed with the, uh, with the green as well as a big old shell logo and NFL logos, believe it or not, just made this car pop on the racetrack. And it was obviously most famous for the 1993 Daytona 500 winning the Dale and Dale show as Dale Jarrett outdueled uh, Dale Earnhardt for the win of that race. This car has already gotten a throwback back to 2016 with Kyle Busch, the very first year of the throwbacks. And obviously it was the right choice, especially considering it was the very first year of Darlington throwbacks. Number eight. Dale Jarrett, Quality Care, 1998. Now, this scheme began use in 1996 for Dale Jarrett at Robert Yates Racing, but I think this scheme popped the most on the Ford Taurus body. Now, this was also the time where Jarrett had the most success with this paint scheme, winning the championship in 1999. Uh, the red, white, and blue is just fantastic. Screams America, screams patriotism, screams NASCAR. I think it's pretty much everything you could want in a NASCAR stock car. It also helps that it's essentially a Ford factory car, kind of similar to what the Wood Brothers have these days with Ford Motorcraft. Ironically enough, this car has gotten a throwback as well. It was Danica Patrick of all drivers who gave this scheme a run in the Southern 500, but unfortunately for fans of this paint scheme like me, they never offered a die cast. What a shame. Number seven, Jeff Burton, Exide Batteries, 1996. Now you can never go wrong with the Exide Batteries paint scheme, at least in my opinion. The contrast of the black with the bright pink that was so synonymous with this paint scheme throughout the 90s, it's really just hard to go wrong. And I think the 96 version of this car is the best one. I absolutely love the half and half paint scheme with the bright blue and the bright pink, almost giving a cotton candy vibe. Very bright, very vibrant, uh, very nice looking car. Unfortunately, Burton didn't score any wins in 1996, 
but his success in the later half of the 90s uh, certainly cemented this paint scheme, this driver, this sponsor as one of the iconic ones of NASCAR in the 90s. Number 6. Dave Blaney, Amico, 1998. Now this is the only predominantly Bush series paint scheme that is on this list, but it was so good that I had to include it. And it's actually a crying shame that this paint scheme has not had a throwback car at all across all three series of NASCAR, especially considering how well Ryan Blaney, Dave's son, has been doing in NASCAR competition thus far. The Amico sponsorship actually transferred across racing brands that Dave Blaney was using at the time. He also was sponsored in the World of Outlaws by Amico, and in fact, Amico sponsored the biggest race for the Outlaw Sprint Cars at the Knoxville Nationals. Now, there's a bigger potential of this paint scheme eventually coming back, especially considering the fact that BP, the parent company of Amico, which closed the brand in their merger in 1999, uh, has brought Amico stations back. You can actually fill up at an Amico station. So there's a possibility sometime in the future we will not only get a proper Amico throwback, but it'll actually be sponsored by them. Number five, Kyle Petty, Hot Wheels, 1997. This, perhaps, for a 90s kid, is the pinnacle. Well, except for another scheme we'll talk about later. But as a kid who loved to play with his Hot Wheels cars and somebody who loved bright, colorful paint schemes, this car was one of my absolute favorites. It was just amazing to have a Hot Wheels sponsored car and the bright blue of the 1997 version, though the sponsorship ran until about 1999, uh, this is just fantastic. This is a great, great paint scheme, and it's unfortunate that we have not seen the iconic orange Hot Wheels track loop around some number, any number, uh, return to the NASCAR series. And I'm desperately hoping that someday somebody will be willing to give this paint scheme a shot and run it at Darlington, because I would be first in line for a diecast. Number four. Terry Labonte, Kellogg's, 1996. Now this won't be the only Hendrick Motorsports paint scheme to make this list, but this is definitely one that as a 90s kid, you just kinda had to love because more often than not, you got a free die cast within a uh, cereal box of cornflakes. And I have to tell you as well, looking back on it with trying to be a little bit more objective in my older age, uh, this is a very nice looking paint scheme. The red, the yellow, the green. It's very eye-popping, very unique, and very nice looking. It uh, all kind of uses the colors of the uh, turkey or the, the chicken or whatever the heck that fowl is on the hood of the car. Labonte actually had quite a bit of success using this paint scheme between 1994 and 1999. The peak, of course, was winning the Cup Series Championship in 1996. Number three, Mark Martin, Valvoline, 1998. Now you'd be hard pressed to find a bad Valvoline paint scheme, but I think head and shoulders above the rest is the 1998-1999 version used by Mark Martin in the Cup Series. Absolutely fantastic, very eye-catching, very dramatic, and very 90s with the red and light blue Vs leading the white into dark blue, and those red rims are just absolutely fantastic. Trevor Bain threw this back in 2015, and unfortunately, the die cast was canceled. I'm still mad about this. Valvoline used this branding across their motorsports activities in the late 90s. Brian Simo used it in the Trans Am series on his Mustang, and Jill DeFerrin used it in 1998 and 1999 on his Kart IndyCar. Number 2. Kyle Petty, Mellow Yellow, 1991. You could argue that the mellow yellow paint scheme was the paint scheme that led NASCAR from the 1980s to the 1990s. Not in small part to the fictional driver of Cole Trickle, who in 1990 drove a mellow yellow car into Daytona 500 Victory Lane in the movie Days of Thunder. 
The partnership was so well received with Mellow Yellow that they decided to stick a primary sponsorship on Kyle Petty's number 42 car for Felix Sabatis between 1991 and 1994. Petty made a challenge for the championship in 1992 but fell short. He was also very strong in the 1993 Daytona 500 but also fell short in that endeavor. But regardless, this scheme has gone down as one of the favorites amongst all NASCAR fans. And thankfully, Kyle Larson did a throwback to this very paint scheme very early on in the throwback weekend. And we've actually seen a couple other variations from some smaller teams. This is one of the most popular paint schemes ever to run in NASCAR. And it's a shame that again, we haven't been able to get any die cast of it. Number one. Jeff Gordon, DuPont, well, virtually the entire 90s, 1993 to 1999. This paint scheme is perhaps the most iconic in all of NASCAR. Yes, eat your heart out, Earnhardt fans. Because of the fact that, well, yes, the mellow yellow paint scheme helped drag NASCAR into the 90s, the Rainbow Warriors paint scheme, along with Jeff Gordon, helped explode NASCAR into a mainstream entertainment property. Originally, it was only going to run as a one-off for Buddy Baker in Talladega in 1993. But once Jeff Gordon got his hands on it, the wins came. Three championships, Daytona 500 and Brickyard 400 wins. An amazing run, but the success on track was only dwarfed by the incredible amount of merchandise that this one race car managed to generate. You could honestly argue with the amount of toys and games and Pepsi machines surrounding Jeff Gordon that this single car perhaps turned more people, more young people, onto NASCAR than any other one thing. Jeff Gordon looked like a superhero with his colorful uh, attire that he wore in this car. And this amazing rainbow paint scheme, interestingly enough, kind of represented the boom period of NASCAR in the 90s. Uh, an endless supply of, of growth and excitement and a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Which is kind of funny to think about because if you look at all of Jeff Gordon's primary paint schemes all the way up until the point he retired, it almost tells the story of NASCAR. You have the prosperous Rainbow Warriors paint scheme, and then come 2001, some of the traditions of NASCAR begin to burn away with the flame paint scheme. And then you get further into the 2000s and the 2010s, and suddenly Jeff Gordon's got an AARP card on the front of his Chevrolet, almost implying that there's some sort of... Uh, past that's gone away and NASCAR is uh, reaching the age of retirement, the good old days in the past. Or maybe I'm just looking too much into it. Regardless, the Rainbow Warriors paint scheme in the hand of Jeff Gordon is perhaps the defining paint scheme that has ever run in NASCAR. And the throwbacks, of course, have been countless throughout history. And they're gonna be continuing as more and more 90s babies continue to have nostalgia about NASCAR. So thank you guys so much for watching this top 10 list. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Did I get it right? I, I definitely think I got number one right. I, I don't even think that's disputable, but then again, that's what the comment section is for. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube, and we'll see you in the next video.